Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Legal Things. Today we're talking about what happens when you claim trial in a criminal case. What does it mean to claim trial to a criminal charge? When you've been formally charged in court for a criminal offence, you'll eventually need to decide whether to plead guilty, meaning you want to admit to the charge and accept that you'll be punished for the offence, or claim trial meaning you deny that you committed the offence and you want to prove your innocence and provide your defence at a trial in court. If you claim trial to the charge, a court hearing will be arranged to take place for you to defend yourself. This is where you need to present the evidence to persuade the court to accept your basis for disputing the offence. If you do this, you may engage a lawyer to represent you at a trial or you may also conduct the trial on your own if you don't have a lawyer. Before the trial is arranged, an administrative hearing called a pre-trial conference or PTC will be conducted to help the court manage the progress of the case up to the day of the trial. This PTC allows the prosecuting lawyers and your lawyers, or you if you are unrepresented, to discuss how best to manage the presentation of the evidence and make efficient use of the time given for the trial. What happens at the actual trial itself? Well, in a criminal trial, the prosecution will first present their case by calling their witnesses to testify and give evidence. The prosecuting officer will examine the witness, meaning to ask the witness questions, allowing him to present his evidence, meaning what he knows about a certain aspect of the case. This first phase of questioning by the prosecution is also called the Examination in Chief, or EIC. After the EIC of each witness is done, your defence lawyer will then have his turn to examine the witness by asking him questions. This is typically done to challenge or to contradict his earlier testimony. And the main purpose of doing this is to show that what the person had said in court was not reliable and shouldn't be given much or any credit by the court. After the cross-examination, the prosecuting officer will then be allowed to ask follow-up questions to the witness by getting him to explain and clarify the answers that he had provided earlier on during cross-examination. After all the prosecution's witnesses have testified and given evidence, your own witnesses that you'll be relying on in support of your defence will then give evidence according to the same process used for the questioning of the prosecution's witnesses, meaning first, examination in chief, followed by cross-examination, and then finally, re-examination. After all the witnesses have completed their testimonies and given the evidence at the trial, the prosecution and defence, meaning you or your lawyer, will present oral or written closing submissions. The purpose of these closing submissions is for each side to summarise the evidence presented at the trial and to give reasons why the judge should accept their version of the facts and events. After the closing submissions have been presented, the judge will then consider the evidence and reasons and then finally decide whether the prosecution has succeeded in proving your guilt. If the prosecution has succeeded in proving its case against you and that you committed the offence, the judge will then convict you of the charge and impose a sentence against you. If the prosecution has failed in proving its case against you and that you committed the offence, the judge will then acquit you of the charge. If you are convicted of the charge, you'll be given an opportunity to inform the judge of the mitigating factors that you may have, and the judge will consider your mitigation plea and then impose a sentence against you. If you are sentenced after pleading guilty and disagree with the judge's decision, you can appeal to the High Court against the sentence imposed if you feel that it was far too high or not supported by the facts or the law. Likewise, the prosecution can appeal against your sentence if it feels that it was far too low and not supported by the facts or the law. If you are convicted and sentenced after claiming trial and you disagree with the judge's decision, you may make an appeal to the High Court also against the conviction as well as the sentence. However, if you are acquitted after having claimed trial, the prosecution can appeal to the High Court against your acquittal. So, now you know. If you enjoy listening to this and would like to hear more, subscribe wherever you like to listen to podcasts and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. And remember, it's not rocket science. It's just legal things.